Hello and welcome to the January 19th edition of the Fredericksburg Standard Radio Post News Podcast. We are back. <laughs> uh, I'm Sam Sutton. I uh, was joined by Brooke Simmons. That's all right. <laughs> Madeline Watson and uh, sports editor Reed Graff. Um, and I guess we'll just kick it off um, with the uh, coronavirus case numbers. They've been kind of spiking lately with the Omicron variant. And uh, Brooke had written that story. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So last week you reported in last week's edition you reported that there is a 30 mm-hmm. percent uh, positivity rate that has increased steeply to 48 percent um, dr parton of the uh, hill country memorial hospital said in a stakeholders meeting hosted by um, the fredericksburg chamber of commerce over zoom that um, the hospital is now testing at 48 percent positivity rate so nearly half of everyone coming in to get tested has covid mm-hmm. um, i think he said Last week, that 90, 95% of the of the cases are are the Omicron variant. Um, one of the one of the things to note is that that's that's only the people that are getting tested at the hospital. That's not taking into account all the people that are testing at home um, or not getting tested at all. Those are uh, those are the confirmed numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, we're obviously seeing issues with getting those tests. Um, Dr. Parton said that they tried they went to San Antonio, tried to get 2,000 tests. We're only able to come back with 1,000, and those are all at the immediate care clinic. Um, if you do need a test, you can go to that clinic, but there's certain requirements mm-hmm. um, that they have listed on their website. But yes, there's a um, huge spike going on everywhere, including Gillespie County, and Dr. Parton said that he doesn't believe that we are even at our at our peak yet. So. Okay. Well, we'll th- thanks for covering that. We'll, yeah. we'll continue to follow those numbers and, and, and coronavirus as it, as it continues, hopefully, Soon we'll see a um, um, the end of the tunnel, but we've been saying that since like March of 2020. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, something. Sorry, something else to note real <laughs> quick. Um, uh, city manager Kent Myers said that uh, just for just for anyone concerned, there's no current plans to uh, to close or to put public meetings online so far, virtual setting. There's still okay. he said he talked to city council. They're still planning to do open meetings um, in public. So, but there are some there are some challenges. Um, especially in terms of dispatch, mm-hmm. um, a lot of critical uh, critical resources in Gillespie County are getting are getting kind of hit. So they're uh, just trying to be careful. But yeah. so far, um, for the public concerned, they're still planning on having open meetings. So, and speaking of resources and, and organizations getting hit by by COVID, um, wanted to talk a little bit about schools. It seems like everything's kind of looking okay for schools right now. Is that okay? is that right, Madeline? Yeah, um, I recently spoke to uh, Superintendent Joe Rodriguez with FISD and several other superintendents with Harper. Um, I spoke with someone at Heritage, spoke with someone at most of the schools in the area. And although there are some spikes and there are some teachers out and, you know, a little bit of difficulties here and there getting subs, overall things seem to be pretty good. There's no plans to um, go completely virtual. I know that Ambleside was um virtual for a brief period of time but that was just because uh several of it was just for the high school so yes it was just for the high school and it was because there was several teachers that were out um but it seems like most schools that i've talked to um looking pretty good no plans to change that no plans to change any mask mandate no plans to change um any requirements to test students um, I know specifically with FISD, um, they post their numbers on the district website. Mm-hmm. And so if you're ever curious about that, that's a good place to look. And it also shows um, the kind of number of cases at each school that should be concerning. So when they hit 5%, that's when the um, they'll kind of decide whether or not they want to close the school. And at least last time I checked, it didn't look like any of the schools were anywhere close to that number, okay. um, luckily. But, of course, um, that could change tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, I will be doing another update in next week's paper um, and talk to all the um, superintendents and principals again and just see how things are going. I think I'm calling them every couple days at this point yeah. <laughs> just because it can change so quickly. But things are looking okay right now and no reason for kids not to be going to school um because of covid (laughs) so well um thanks for following up on that and again we'll continue to report on everything covid19 as going forward as as this virus develops um uh the next thing we want to talk about is housing price records um market's still hot um 
according to some numbers that I got from uh, uh, from the Century 21, Mimi Bartel, uh, from um, national realtors and from uh, realtors at the state level. Uh, looks like Fredericksburg's median home price right now is around um, $400,000, $450,000. I think I, it was what I reported. It's on page one of, uh, of this week's paper. Um, and uh, the average home price is uh, over is around five hundred and forty nine thousand. So that those are continuing to rise. Um, real estate um, agents expect it to uh, to rise a little bit in twenty twenty two, but they hope that it kind of tapers off a little bit. That it's it's going to stay hot, but not as not as crazy as it's been. Um, as far as affordable housing inventory goes, that's still you know very much limited. Um, there are a lot of people trying to work on that right now. We just got word that the city of Fredericksburg, along with the uh, Economic Development Commission, has hired a housing coordinator. Um, we're going to have more on that in next week's paper, so keep a lookout for that. They've been trying to fill that position, I think, o uh, over the past year, so that'll be interesting to see what that person can do um, for, for housing in our community. Um, it should be a, only a one-year contract with the possibility to renew. So um, that'll be interesting to see how that develops. Uh, the next thing we're going to go on to is sports. Sports. Um, I'm back. Yeah. Winter, sort winter of. sports are going. <laughs> sure are. Yeah. And this was a good sports section. I, I'm pretty proud of how this week turned out. Um, there's some good and there's some bad mixed in this week's sports section. When I, when I say that, I just mean good news and bad news. Uh, starting with the good news, um, both girls teams, excuse me, Harper and Fredericksburg are winning a lot. Um, the Fredericksburg girls, uh, not in this week's paper, but it'll be next week's paper, just beat Bernie. And they got through the top two teams that we were kind of fearing in the district was Bernie and Wimberley. They beat both of them. Um, so you got a story on that and so a couple quotes from head coach Kerry Grona in this week's paper. Uh, the boys fell to Wimberley. Um, we've got the game story on that and kind of where they've been. To, but outside of that loss, they've been playing really well. They've won five of their last six. So um, maybe they can write the shit, ship and get things going there here and going into district play yeah. and then um we've also got some really cool features this week so the Fredericksburg high school cheer team took eighth in the state a That's year awesome. after finishing 22nd at the same competition That's so awesome. <laughs> big leap for them and i was really excited to get to feature them because it's an organization and it's a group that spends all their time cheering on others mm -hmm. and i think they finally got to be the ones getting cheered on and i think that was a cool story and we got some good quotes from their coach jo uh, jody wilder so um excited for them we also had a feature on hunter metzger a former billy who is uh he's had a really interesting story so he was a he played football and ba baseball and he was a power lifter and then he went off to college right as the pandemic was hitting okay. uh and his senior year uh, of high school he was on the powerlifting team and his uh he was trying to make it to regionals and as, as a sophomore he didn't qualify as a junior he was hurt so he didn't get to compete and his senior year he finally qualified and then it all got shut down and he didn't get to compete um so he goes spends a year struggling to stay in the gym because gyms aren't open and then uh do through a competition with his brother and his dad and lifting with some of his former classmates he ends up getting back into lifting next thing you know he's on the ut powerlifting team oh, wow. and is competing and qualifying for nationals so a uh, really interesting story and got some great photos from them. So uh, Hunter Metzger's feature, I believe, is on page 13. Mm -hmm. So please check it out. I'm really happy with that one. And that's one of my f one of my favorite features we've gotten to do since being here. Um, and then next week's sports section, I can go ahead and tell you, we're hoping to have an update on the AD and head football coach search. I'm going to talk to Coach. Uh, I'm going to talk to Joe Rodriguez this week and get an update on that. And then um, we're going to have. Uh, quotes and the final scores and the, and the game story from the Bernie game for the girls, their biggest win so far this year. Uh, we'll have that. We'll have just local scores and updates from all local basketball and soccer and, and baseball and softball starting up this week with their practices. So uh, this week was a good one. Next week should be just as good. And I got to also talk about your column on the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of bad, <laughs> speaking of bad, I uh, shared my thoughts on the Cowboys. Um, I'm sure my thoughts are shared by a lot of other um, Cowboys fans, and uh, uh, they let us down again. And if you want to hear anything more about what I thought about that, you can read it on page, I believe it starts on page 12, mm -hmm. and you can read, I think it ends on page uh, 13. But yeah. if you want to be sad with me, check out my column. Yeah. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, uh, we are going to be losing one of our 
uh, Shining Reporters. Madeline Watson is uh, leaving us on next Wednesday. So um, uh, she's been amazing. She's written some awesome features. She's helped us a lot with, with news on affordable housing, news on mental health, um, help with co covering, doing great job covering a lot of the local events like Oktoberfest and the Fourth of July parade. That was a, that was a lot of fun. Doing that was a lot of fun. So. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a, a one of those memories that I cherish <laughs> forever is um, when Sam and I hosted the Fourth of July parade. That yeah. that was a blast. Yeah. Um, and Oktoberfest. Oh, loved covering Oktoberfest. I'm really gonna miss um, my job here and getting to know everyone. Um, love getting to know all these businesses and all these local entrepreneurs that's another part of my job here that i've just absolutely loved um yeah there's a lot of great things and um unfortunately i'm moving on um but you know i'm always going to be reading the fredericksburg standard so i um, wanting to know what's going on here so all right well th thank you so much for your work this year we're definitely going to miss you uh, as a friend and, and as a co-worker so thank you for everything you've done for us I'm going to miss you guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. Um, but I, th so I think that's all that we've got. Is there anything else that y'all have to talk about? All right. Well, again, this is the um, uh, January 19th edition of the Fredericksburg Standard News Broadcast. Uh, check out our recent edition on news shelves. Pick one up here at the Standard. Um, read our coverage on www.fredericksburgstandard.com. And uh, read your uh, looking into starting up your, uh, your podcast. So definitely... Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we've kind of, ever since the Lance Moffat situation kind of kind of happened, we, we've put it on the back burner and there's also been so much going on. And um, But I do want to revive it. It's not dead. It's just kind of been put on the back burner. But the Standard Sports Talk podcast will rise once again. <laughs> yeah, it's just been on. It's just been on hiatus. Um, but we will come back. We might mess with the format a little bit, but we'll see. But it, it's definitely going to come back. Awesome. So keep, keep an ear out for that. Um. And thank you so much again for uh, for watching. I'm Sam Sutton, joined by Brooke Nevins, Madeline Watson, and sports editor Reed Graff.